For Krema Media's policy, I'm Sane Lameni. Bosa Acting CEO Kasko Vadia is in conversation with policy about the business economic in Daba 2020. So, Mr. Kuvadia, can you briefly remind us about the purpose of the recent business economic in Daba 2020 that was deemed activating actual outcomes? Yeah, so we felt that it's opportune for business and government to have an interaction mm -hmm. uh, before the SONA. Right? And we structured this because we have an annual business economic in Daba, mm -hmm. so this was this year's one. Mm -hmm. And we structured this year's one in a way that we spent most of the day in five working groups where government and business can, on critical issues related to this economy, mm -hmm. actually have a robust but constructive interaction. All right. So the working groups met for three hours mm -hmm. uh, and came out with critical issues that we need to collaborate on. Mm -hmm. and and. The feedback I got from the groups was that this was very useful. Uh, the interactions were robust, but they were constructive. They were able to barrel down into issues. Mm -hmm. And what BUSA will now do is we'll follow up on this in Daba. We will contact the people in those work groups and from them put together little teams to actually start working on and developing implementation plans mm -hmm. and implementation milestones for those areas of activity, mm -hmm. again, for those critical areas. So mm -hmm. we wanted this to be an actionable uh, and an action-oriented mm -hmm. endeavor, mm -hmm. not just a talk shop. Yeah. And I think that's what we achieved. We had about 450 people there. And, and certainly all the feedback I've received so far has been very positive. Mm -hmm. Bosa President Sipo Pijana's speech gave hope that our economy could be resuscitated when he said, we have a proven track record of pulling ourselves out of the rut by our bootstrap. As a person who sits in the meetings with the President and other CEOs, is this how business community feels? Well, look, business, Sipo is right that mm. we've had a history mm -hmm. Of, of, of tapping reserves that mm -hmm. we have to pull ourselves out of situations. Mm -hmm. But we also have a history of putting ourselves into situations, okay? Mm -hmm. So the fact that we can pull ourselves out of situations is mm -hmm. not the issue. The mm -hmm. issue is why do we put ourselves into situations that make things very difficult? Mm -hmm. So our message to government consistently has been that the critical issue for this country is to create an environment to attract investment, both local and global, mm -hmm. form new businesses, grow the businesses that we have, create jobs, grow the economy, that then increases uh, tax collections and government has more money to deal with the social issues we have. That's mm -hmm. the virtuous cycle we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. And And what we telling government is that right now we don't have that environment. We have, uh, we are in a serious crisis where growth is either around about 1% or even below 1% according to the World Bank in the next year. We have a, a fiscal deficit of close on to 60% going up to 70% in the next few years or, mm -hmm. or uh, 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 debt of going up to 70% in the next few years. We've under collected taxes of mm -hmm. 50 billion rand this year. Mm -hmm. Business confidence is an, at an all time low. Employment is at 30%. Youth, mm -hmm. sorry, unemployment, youth unemployment over mm -hmm. 50%. So it's quite clear where we are. And, mm -hmm. and because of where we are, the responsibility and the levers to actually create the environment for investment lies with government, mm. all right? And, and what we are telling the president is that government needs to take the hard decisions to create that environment. Mm. So we, we're telling the president that you need to say, and your sonar is coming up, you need to say that the critical issue is an environment for investment and growth. You need to say that you will urgently address the structural issues in the economy you need to say that you want to crowd the private sector in to use its capacity and resources to help you uh, generate growth. 
you need to say that you are going to appoint a capable board for ESCOM with a capable CEO, capable chair within the next month mm -hmm. and that you will then give the board and the executive the space to do what they need to do mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. so, so we believe that the president needs to rise above the political fray mm -hmm. and we're not saying it's easy mm -hmm. but he needs to rise above the political fray and lead us as president of the country, not mm -hmm. as president of the ANC, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what, and, and if he shows that sort of leadership, and we believe he can, we, mm -hmm. we, we, we believe in him, we have confidence in him. If he shows that sort of leadership, mm -hmm. business is ready, willing, and able to work with him to get investment going once mm -hmm. the environment is right, to go with him on road shows to attract investment from outside and so on but we need that leadership. Is Bosa satisfied with both its access to and the outcomes of its interactions with government currently? Look, we can't complain about access. Mm -hmm. We, president sees us, cabinet sees us when mm -hmm. we need to see them. What we are concerned about is that there's no action arising from those meetings. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're impressing upon the president, his mm -hmm. cabinet and government, mm -hmm. that we now need implementation. Implementation mm -hmm. of a whole range of things. We all know what the problems are. Let's mm -hmm. stop rehashing them. Mm -hmm. We all know what needs to be done. Uh, before the IMF comes to tell us what needs to be done, mm -hmm. we know what they're going to tell us. Mm -hmm. We all know that we're facing a possible downgrade from Moody's. Mm -hmm. So, so we all know this. Let's start acting. Mm. Your president cautioned President Ramaphosa's overemphasis on consensus building in the current economic context. Why is this a problem? Well, because you see, you can't govern a country mm -hmm. through consensus. You can't govern a country through alliances that include people who have not been elected by the electorate. Mm. Okay, so the electorate elects a government mm. to govern and should be holding that government to account. account. The electorate can't hold others to account. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are saying consult with whoever you like, Mr. President, including us as business. Mm. Listen to what everybody says and then take decisions in the national interest and act on those decisions. Mm. There are some decisions we might not like as a business, mm. but that's fine. Some decisions we will like. We can't win everything we want to win, right? But take the decisions that create certainty. Mm -hmm. it, it, it increases confidence. Yeah. And then those decisions you've taken that we don't like, we'll, we'll work with them in some mm -hmm. way or other. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're asking the President and the government to do. Mm. The conference took place at a time when our country has just received the bad news of mass marts Telcom and even Sibanya Stillwater are planning to shed jobs. What is Busa's view on the recent developments? Well, we've told the president again that we cannot create jobs in this environment. Mm -hmm. Businesses are restructuring mm -hmm. to just keep their heads above water, mm -hmm. to keep as profitable as they can be under these circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as a result of that, jobs will be lost. Mm -hmm. So what we should be talking about at in the immediate term, what do we do to try and retain jobs? Forget creating jobs. What mm. do we do to try and retain okay. jobs, right? And, and, and so it's understandable that this is happening. He, nobody likes it. Mm. Okay, but it's, so, so, you know, if you look at businesses today, you either restructure, which includes some retrenchments, mm. and, and keep your head above water, mm. Or you say no retrenchments, and in the next few months that business has to close. Mm. So, so there's hard choices to be made here, and that's where we, that's where unfortunately we are. Mm. Mm. Unemployment, as you have also alluded, has risen to almost 30 percent. What were some of the resolutions taken on the matter at the conference? Well, we absolutely clear we can't deal with unemployment until we get investment and growth. Mm. Okay, because the businesses are not growing they're not going to employ people. Mm. If businesses aren't investing in machinery to expand and to mechanize and to, to basically grow their businesses, they're not going to employ people. Mm. So, you know, a business that's flat, that's not increasing its activity, that's basically restructuring just to stay in business, is not going to employ people. That's why we need the investment, 
we need that investment to to grow the current businesses and to create new businesses, including medium businesses. Mm -hmm. And it's that sort of activity and that sort of environment that will create jobs. Okay, so so we absolutely we must be horrified at the unemployment figures, mm -hmm. but but people only get employed when businesses work and businesses grow. Oh, yeah. And that's what we're saying we need to create the environment for mm. them. Some unions are pushing for Public Enterprise Minister Pravin Gordon to step down following Jabu Mabuza's resignation as ESCOM chair. Do you think this is fair? I don't think it's, it's appropriate. I, I think that Minister Gordon forget what he's achieved in the past, mm -hmm. okay? He was bastion in the fight against corruption and mm -hmm. all that with, with others. Mm -hmm. But he has tried to do his best to actually keep Eskom going, mm -hmm. take the hard decisions. I think to, to make him the scapegoat mm -hmm. for this, I think, is inappropriate. Uh, I think we also need to bite the bullet and begin to say that nobody, Nobody, be it the president, be it the CEO of ESCOM, be it the board, mm -hmm. can sit here and look me in the eye and tell me there's no, there won't be load shedding next week. Okay? Because a conveyor belt breaks and suddenly you have to load shed. Mm -hmm. So let's accept that we have some very old plants. Mm -hmm. We need to maintain them. And I think what we should be doing, we should be getting used to load shedding for a period of time, provided mm -hmm provided there's clear action and implementation to maintain those things, to fix them up, to address issues related to load shedding and, and, and uh, plants not working and so on. Mm -hmm. But side by side with that, we would urge government and particularly the Minister of Minerals, uh, Minister Mantash, mm -hmm. to do whatever is necessary to ensure that renewables come onto line and, and new uh, phases of renewable contracts mm -hmm. are enabled now, not mm -hmm. yesterday, not tomorrow, now, mm -hmm. uh, and, and other, f other ta forms of, of energy. Because we, we need to implement the integrated resource plan that talks about ESCOM playing a role, but it also talks about other types of energy resources. And we need to enable those as quickly as possible. So mm -hmm. the president, in his address at the Busa function, talked about enabling quickly people to be able to generate in electricity and send it, sell it to ESCOM, right? Mm. Uh, private generation and so yeah. on. There are people sitting with their roofs made of, of uh, uh, solar, solar mm. panels. They mm. have excess electricity they can sell to ESCOM. Mm. They can't do it at the moment because the regulatory environment doesn't enable them to do so. Yeah. We must deal with those sorts of issues. Mm. The conference discussed restructuring economy, energy security, enabling a capable state, critical sectors for economic growth, and the fourth industrial revolution. Can you highlight what is your organization's view on the SOEs, especially ESCOM? Yeah, so ESCOM, look, we said the president's own advisory panel made certain recommendations. Mm -hmm. The president must now tell a new board chair and the CEO I want to see this implemented in such a such and such a time frame, mm -hmm. right? Otherwise, you account for it. He mu they must then leave the board and the and the executive to do that and to do it in every way they see fit, mm -hmm. so that the organization can be stabilized and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and as I said, renewable and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a question of whether you can fix up ESCOM or not. It's mm. got to be seen within the IRP, right? Mm. Other, I mean, SAA is in business rescue. Mm. Uh, the business rescue practitioner will do what he needs to do, mm. right? Uh, other, what our view is that what government should be doing is saying, okay, which state-owned enterprises mm. are of strategic critical importance to this country? So Praza, for instance, mm. which runs the rail network, yeah. okay? Transnet, which transports and so on, are of critical importance yeah. to, this, to this country. Mm. Let's fix those up. Let's ensure they are viable. And a lot of this is let's, the corruption issue, mm. poor management, poor capacity in there. Let's fix all of that up, right? Let's get people who can do the job in the job, mm. right? 
others and then let's ask which state-owned institutions don't we need mm. so so the question whenever i look at organizations even the business sector mm. that i'm involved in and we're going through restructuring i say ask one question will anyone miss this organization if it's not there tomorrow mm. if the answer is no then close it mm. okay if it's not going to be of critical importance then either close it mm. or sell it to the private sector the private sector is interested in running with it right but we don't have the resources we don't have the time for vanity projects mm. right and so so look i'm sounding a bit hard but but we are in a situation mm. where we need to make some choices all of us yeah. we all going to have to make trade offs we all going to have to make compromises Mm. and 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 let's grit our teeth and start working on that mm. is business supporting of president's decision to skip attending this year's world economic forum i i i can't say whether we support it or not because president hasn't spoken to us about oh, it right? okay. but speaking of the cuff now mm -hmm. i think the minister of finance is going to lead the delegation mm -hmm. i think we have capable ministers who will go with him mm -hmm. I think it's a good sign and a good message for the president to say hold on a second we've got a crisis in our country. Mm. I need to be here. All hands need to be on deck and I want to show leadership in trying to address this crisis. Mm. So I will not go to Davos and I think that's a good message. Mm. What would you say to the struggling small business fraternity that is losing hope in our ailing economy? Uh so so I think there are a range of issues that we need to address for small medium enterprises but there's absolutely no debate. Mm -hmm. That our economy, the number of SMEs in our economy is way below comparable economies. Mm -hmm. uh way below even some of the more developed economies mm -hmm. where SMEs play a critical role mm -hmm. and so if we want to one of the issue is to address unemployment we've got to create more small medium enterprises and and that's one of the thing that's come out of this conference and we certainly will work with government on mm -hmm. but but you know again the environment is tough so the mm -hmm. the load shedding is devastating on business but it mm. it kills small medium enterprises mm. okay mm. and so we that's why the escom issue that's why renewables to en enable us to ensure reliable power supply and so on is so critical mm. and lastly what message do you think the sa delegation should address at the 50th edition of the annual world economic forum look the minister of finance i saw somewhere today is quoted as saying that he'll talk about the structural issues we have right mm. and 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 he must talk about what we're trying to do about it i don't think we should go there and try to kid people the mm. people who come to davos do their homework Mm. they they know what issues are in different countries mm -hmm. uh so we should be uh, i think we should go there talk to them about the amazing opportunities we do have in the country mm -hmm. talk to them about some of the problems we are experiencing and talk to them about what how business and government in particular and hopefully labor as well mm. are beginning to talk and engage to try and address the crisis we are in mm. uh uh but so so it's an enviable position to be mm. in for the minister and his colleagues to mm. be at Davos to be quite honest mm. but i think that that's the sort of message we need we need to talk about the opportunities in this country we need to talk about even though we have a skills problem but we also need to talk about the nature of our businesses the nature of our economy it's diversified mm -hmm. we have some of the best businesses in the world here we expanding in other parts of the continent there's a lot of positive stuff to talk about mm -hmm. okay but don't talk about that and and pretend that people don't know about mm. our problems so contextualize our problems mm -hmm. and say what we're going to be doing about it that was kaskovadia speaking to krimamedia's policy about the business economic in daba 2020